Hi, and welcome to What's New in Jenkins LTS 2.361.1. The day has finally arrived. Along with me, as always, is Mark Waite. Mark, how are you doing? Great, Darren. How are you? Good. So it's here, finally. It is. We made it. Well, technically yesterday, but... Still, we made it. Yeah, we made it. Uh, and we had one comment earlier in the day. Meet you. Nice to see the new Jenkins version. Yes, it is nice to see it. But if you joined us live last Tuesday, Tuesday? Last Tuesday, we had a session about get ready for Jenkins LTS 2.361.1. Hopefully you heeded our advice. And maybe you haven't been so aggressive that you installed 361.1 in your production environment yet. Right? Maybe you can, right? Maybe, maybe your processes are all perfect. But a lot of people typically not. Have, Mark, have you upgraded 361.1 on your real live machine yet? I have. Oh, you have. Okay. But, but you're willing but, to take the risk. <laughs> exactly. And that, that's part of the game, right? For me, yeah. I, I certainly, I'm supporting quantity one users, me, right? And so yeah. if I break, it's pretty straightforward. It's I know who broke it. Yeah. A team of a thousand. I'm going to be a little bit more. Uh, exactly. You're going to be take more, more careful. You're going to be more, more diligent. Yep. Uh, as Andrea says, so long Java 8. Well, at least for running the bits. Yes. You can still use Java 8 to do stuff. By the way, my name is Darren Pope. This is Mark Waite. I forgot the introductions. And also, we'll be talking about DevOps World again. So be sure to hang out for that because mm -hmm. we can save you some money if you want to go. All right. Mark, what is the process to go through a Jenkins LTS? Yeah, so Jenkins long-term support releases are selected once every 12 weeks. About every quarter, we choose a baseline. The baseline release is then watched for several weeks of weekly releases for any backports that may be needed, and then is declared as a dot one. So 2.361 was the baseline release. 2.361.1 is the LTS release. Four weeks after that initial LTS, we'll release another LTS release, dot two. Four weeks more and another LTS, dot three. And too many clicks today, right? I can upgrade Jenkins all day long. I can't push a button on a live stream. I, yeah. it's, it's okay. It's all right. It's, it's on. one of those days, exactly. <sighs> okay. Let's get into it because there's a lot to cover today. There is. So the the key part to this is, number one, we went all about Java 8 and Java 11 last week. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about, you know, we'll mention it, but we're not going to go into the depth that we did last week. But I want to show you something before we actually even get to this point. If you haven't checked it out recently, when you click on the download link, and depending on how you're sized, you know, download may be under a hamburger menu, menu uh, the look and feel for the download page has changed just a little bit. It has. We're very grateful, okay. actually, to Jan Farachik and Tim Jacome. They did some rework on the cascading style sheets that are used to assure more consistency, to make things better, so that it's closer to the look and feel of Jenkins itself. Uh, speaking of better, this is, this is a bit of a diversion. If you go to the blog and take a look at the blogs now, uh, they look really good. They do. They've really done a nice. Jan Jan really has an eye for or for nice design on pages. Yeah, uh, I'll say I'll say it a little bit less politely. It doesn't look like an engineer created it anymore. Hey hey, now careful there. Now you're getting really. Now we're getting sensitive. <laughs> Change log. Okay. So do you want to start on the backport part of things, which is the changes since three sixty one? By the way. 42 sunnies, three sad faces, or three cloudies, or rainy, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know what those mean, at the top, there's the feedback, no major issues. If you click into this and you need to report something, you could, after, after you've opened the issue, this is the key part, after you open the issue, put in the issue ID here. Don't use Jenkins-1. Please. Exactly, right. Please. So. So the, the rating system that Darren just noted is a good way for you to give direct feedback to the developers and to the Jenkins community. So we appreciate when you click one of those one of those indicators, they help us understand how's it going with this release. Do you yep. have to do it? No, but does it help us? Yes, it does. Absolutely. 
Uh, one other thing you'll notice, the little dots on the left-hand side, if you've not been with us before, uh, you'll see little sizes, some reds, some purples. I'm going to call it purple. Uh, and the legend for that is up here at the top. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll notice in none of this for 361 is there's no security, no yellows, which is the security fix, right? right. So no or amber, whatever that is. So no security in this release. Do you want to start in the general notes since the LTS, or do you want to start in the back ports? Let's, let's start with the general notes, and we'll come okay. back to the back ports, because I think the, the big notable changes are first there, and okay. then we, we certainly need to talk about the back ports, because they matter. But yeah. the bigger picture, the larger, full, full canvas, big paintbrush kind of things are in this section. Right. Again, requires Java 11 now. That means controller, and it means the, means the agent. That's correct. Uh, but there's a twist. And this, this means it requires Java 11, or that also includes Java 17, right? So 11 and 17. However, let me get back to the upgrade notes. So the upgrade guide, which is also at the top of the, of the release notes, let me get back to there, and then we'll go to or the upgrade guide. 361.1. Right. Yeah. This is what we saw last week. Mm -hmm. This is the 52, 55, that's all 8 and 11, no big deal. We go into both the controller and the agents to 11. Again, we, we talked about that and showed what happens when you don't do that. The container images, Docker images, container images uh, are been at 11, no big deal. Mm -hmm. Distributions, this is where it starts to get a little scratchy. Because if you've done Timurin, you did it via the package, say yum install Timurin 11 JDK, but you don't forget, don't remember to necessarily update the alternatives, usually it'll pick it up, but maybe not, especially if you're on 8 to 11, you might have to switch it. Again, your mileage may vary. I would still check it. Again, we did that in the video last week as well. But now, what happened to the JDKs? Yeah, so the story, the story in the JDKs is a little different story, right? That version number, 11.0.16.1, is rather uncommon. Usually it's a three-part version number, 11.0.n. That fourth entry means there was a significant enough problem found in the JDK that the JDK release teams chose to release a patch version to 11.0.16. And as it turns out, that patch version is quite important to Jenkins users. We've had failures in, reported from, from actual users of the first item listed there, this mm -hmm. C2 just-in-time compiler problem. We're reasonably confident we've had actual users tell us, yep, they've had Jenkins controllers crash because of this. And it's a memory allocation problem. The JDK allocates a, a large array and sometimes crashes. So not predictable. It's a relatively infrequent thing. It, it seems to not be high frequency, but having your controller crash is a big deal. And this is one of those that existed both in Java 11 and in Java 17. And so mm -hmm. there have been updates to both 11 and 17 to fix the issue. Now, there's a, there's a glaring problem here, and people mm -hmm. should be aware of this. Red Hat released the fix for their JDK just yesterday. So you can get 11.0.16.1 on Red Hat. However, the Debian project and Ubuntu, as far as I can tell, have not released 11.0.16.1. So if you're hit by this, you may have to switch to Temerin, at least temporarily, rather than using the JDK provided by your Linux distribution vendor. Now, the Jenkins project uses Temerin, so we test it heavily. But you, you get to choose which JDK you use. Okay. So if you're on 11.0.15, Mark, what would you say? Just hang out there for a little bit longer? No, no harm to hang out there. We are not aware okay. of any, any of the security fixes that are in 11.0.16 that actually affect Jenkins. Okay. So we don't see any compelling reason that you must go to 11.0.16, but as a project, we much prefer to be on the latest JDK. That's, we were glad we were because we detected this problem. Exactly. Now, I guess my point there is, if you haven't 
if, if you're on Debian or Ubuntu and you're on 11.0.15 now, just don't worry because they haven't, because they're also, they are shipping 11.0.16, right? That's correct. They and are that's shipping 11.0.16. And if you, if you get 11.0.16 through apt upgrade, you may see this JIT failure. Right. Which you don't want to see. Right. That's just, you just don't want to. Okay. So what about this next one? Because it seems like, okay, now I've gone to these dot ones, but, and Metaspace? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so this one, this one I find especially challenging because there's a, there's a memory leak problem mm -hmm. in one or two of the pipelines or two, one or two of the Jenkins plugins. Right. Um, the crucial thing here is upgrade your plugins. Now, okay. that's a, a fairly common statement, and so let's reiterate it again. Upgrade your plugins as part of a Jenkins upgrade. Prior to upgrading your Jenkins, upgrade all the plugins. <laughs> Correct. Prior Actually, to upgrading, upgrade the plugins. After the upgrade, upgrade the plugins because it's healthy for you both cases. Right. And before you even upgrade the first plugin, shut everything down and back it up. Correct. Right. Well, it's good counsel. I, I, yeah, we, we, we should always do that. Okay. So then we also have something about C groups. Yeah. And now this one, this one is a, is a love hate kind of experience. Uh, C groups are really, really cool. This is what's happened mm -hmm. now is that the JDK now actively asks questions from the container runtime environment and tries to use those to adjust its configuration. So it'll adjust memory usage. It can even adjust things like garbage collection. And that's really a positive. We like it when the operating system is communicating more information to the Java, Java environment. However, that may mean that you get a, a different behavior with this version if you're running inside a Docker container than you did previously because now it's actually honoring some of the settings inside the C groups container environment. So that's nice. Move yeah, along. It's, yeah, it's it, it's really a positive. Yeah. It is a positive, and and our container experts inside the Jenkins project love this enhancement. But the more skeptical people noted that hey, it does in fact change behavior. Right. Which it's good to know. Right. It is. Okay. A couple more things here which we'll, we'll just go through them here and we'll just call them out once we get on the change log. Mm -hmm. Jetty was finally updated. Wow. Yeah. Yes, this is and this is this is a source of some joy, right? Yeah. One of the things that's happening throughout open source communities around the world is that they are steadily setting aside Java 8 and switching to Java 11. The Jetty project had done that some time ago. Jetty 9 is their Java 8 based version. Jetty 10 requires Java 11. And you can see by the patch number on the end there, they've been through 11 releases supporting Java 11, concurrent with their support of Java 8. So we're really pleased that we've been able to switch to Jetty 10. So we get the benefits of Jetty 10. We get, we're on a platform that the Jetty project still declares is, is open for community support. They had declared the end of community support for Jetty 9 a while ago. Now they're they're willing to support us if we had to go back to Jetty nine, but nonetheless we like that we're on Jetty ten. But here's the twist, because if you were using these two flags, uh, not only it doesn't matter if you've upgraded to Java eleven, you're still going to have problems. Correct. So if you were running TLS endpoint termination inside the Java process. That's actually relatively uncommon as far as I can tell. Most people terminate their TLS in a, in a web server like Nginx or Apache. But if you were, and it was, it was fully supported, and if you, you were using this option that has actually been deprecated since 2016 to allow you to specify, specify an RSA private key as part of your certificate, that will no longer work. You have to use the new, the new arguments. Right. The other thing that happened was minimum remoting versions. I'm assuming this is still Java 8 related. Well, this one is, this one is actually more of a, we hope nobody's affected by this because you should upgrade the remoting version by upgrading your jar every time you upgrade Jenkins. 
And, and SSH agents that are started through SSH, for instance, automatically do that. Right. But outbound, inbound agents don't. And so this is there as a safeguard. If you happen to be running an inbound agent that's using something really old, mm -hmm. it will now fail and say, sorry, you're, you're too old. I can't safely talk to you. And there is a plugin that will help you manage that. And you can be really restrictive. Uh, that's called, help me, Mark. Versions Monitor Plugin. It's actually Versions mentioned up above in the change log. Yeah. Okay. And, and, it, okay. and it's a really good choice to have that thing because it doesn't check just your remoting version. It also checks your Java version. Right. And it will warn you if either of those, and, and it has le layers of or levels of um, severity that it will say, I want to be this strict. Or no, right. I want to be a little bit less strict, a little bit more permissive. Like the most strict? The controller versions of both of these things, the JDK and the agent or the remoting version, have to match exactly. Right. No ifs, ands, ors, or buts. Otherwise, the agent won't connect. So this, I, I like that plugin. I like it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Now, instance identity? Yeah, what? this is, okay, this is this is kind of an internal internal Jenkins thing. And, and yeah. so... We expect most people won't be affected by it, but it is a significant enough change that we felt like we had to mention it in the upgrade guide just in case. So the crucial thing is instance identity is a way of the Jenkins controller obtaining for itself a, a strong identity, a strong who is it. And, and that strong identity is done with this plugin. Well, by splitting it out from core, we reduce the load on core. This is, a, this is a good help, but it means you need to follow the counsel given earlier, upgrade all your plugins. Let me see if I can rephrase it a little bit. This instance identity used to be baked into core. Correct. It was, just, it was just part of core. It has been pulled out into a plugin called instance identity. So whatever the, whatever the math is that is inside of that is now in a plugin. That's you, correct. Why was it pulled out? So it, it reduces overhead, reduces burdens on the core developers by getting oh, okay. functionality outside of core. Okay. So it wasn't, it's not so much that it's doing anything heavy in core because the plugin is still going to be doing the same thing. It's re removing the burden off the developers of having to keep that there, whereas now they can keep it separate and, and bring it in in whatever right. version. Exactly. Right. Because I would imagine that's probably fairly slow moving. I think so. I haven't looked yeah. at the exact history, but right, it's now one of the niceties of it. If I remember correctly, this plugin has actually been switched now to continuous delivery. So every mm -hmm. time there's a, a relevant change, a new release is you get made. a new bake. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <sighs> Removed Java Web support. Are we going back to 2011? Well, what? well, okay. Now, come on. We, we owe it to people to describe. So many, many Jenkins users probably don't even know what Java Web Start is. So let's yeah. first be fair and describe what Java Web Start is. And this is where we have to go back to 2011. Yes. Right? We, we have to go back to a time when people were allowed to click page links on a web page and download binaries to their computer, which were immediately executed. Now, in 2022, that's terrifying. Right? No one would allow such a thing. You're not allowed to click something that auto-downloads and executes. But in the days of 2011 and 2015 even, it was kind of a, an attractive thing. In this particular case for Jenkins, there was a button on the agent page that said, launch the agent. Here I'm sitting on a Windows computer. I press that launch agent button, it would download a little stub, automatically start the stub. The stub would cause it to connect to my Jenkins controller, and I had an agent running on my Jenkins, on my, my Windows desktop. Very convenient, very helpful, very, very dangerous in the world of modern web threats. To say the least. So that is now gone, gone, gone. Right. right. And and is it it's not that it's not that Jenkins itself was a big issue there or right. that there was a particular threat there, but rather in general our understanding of threats from web based web based content is much more sophisticated now than it was when this technology was introduced. Right. So this is all of the upgrade notes. Read the upgrade notes. Know the upgrade notes. I mean 
I, I would even say to the point of when you first take a look at the change log, just sort of scan the change log. Right. But go take a look at the upgrade notes first because that's really where if you're going to get bit really quickly, it's probably going to be called out in the upgrade notes. Exactly. And yeah. and the the danger of not reading the upgrade guide is you may in fact hit one of the obvious problems there that you could have avoided if you just read them first. Right. Okay, so we did require job 11. Here's instance identity. Uh, I believe, I thought so. There's remove Java web start. The, I don't see, did, was, was Jetty a backport? It was. We had to oh. do a backport, right? We got it oh, into okay. weekly after 2.361, so it was got it. Oh, there, there it is, Windstorm. Okay, yep. got it. Okay, so let's go back here. New design for project configuration. Yes. So so this one, I think the best thing to do here, Darren, is let's show people how it looks. Okay. So bring up oh. 2.346.3. Okay. And create a job. Of course, I've timed out. If I was smart, I would not have any credentials. Uh, uh, credentials on it. Yeah, um, but then okay, you'd so be showing you'd be showing a bad pattern, and that would be completely hypocritical. Good for you for having that. Yeah. Okay. ASDF pipeline. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's notice, all of our normal stuff, right? Right. And notice up at the top, tabs. Tabs that wander back and forth. Yep, they stay sort of at the top. They're sort now, of complicated when you're dealing with narrow screens. They get really complicated, etc. Yep. Make sure I don't. Yeah, I've timed out here too. During that five-minute countdown, I should log in. Um, create a job. We'll call this ASDF because I can. Pipeline. Now notice where those menus are. Those links, instead of across the top, they're now on the sidebar over on the left. One, they're much easier to read for my tired eyes. And two, it feels much more modern, right? I mean, that that across the top thing is a little different than most other applications use. I could say, doesn't look like an engineer created this. Um, it, you could say that, and that's okay. Jan, Jan and, and Tim and others, thanks to Daniel Beck and to Basil Crow for all the work that's been getting us to this point, yes. Okay. Now, is that for all projects? It, it, it includes, so it includes Freestyle projects, mm -hmm. pipeline projects, mm -hmm. multi-branch pipeline projects, organization folders, folders, mm -hmm. matrix projects, uh, and I think it even includes the legacy Maven integration project. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I, I, I don't remember for sure on the Maven integration project because I love Stephen Connolly's comment that he considered that job type evil. So, but I, I think even Maven integration has it. Okay. Update to various UI elements, modernizing, again, sort of the ongoing tables to divs, we're still finding them? Well, no, in this case, it's, or it's, it's not. more, this, this, these are more changes along helping the UI look even better. So mm -hmm. for instance, we had some progress bars that weren't mm -hmm. quite laid out the way they should have been, that they just mm -hmm. didn't render correctly. That's been fixed now. And those kind of enhancements that just make the product look and feel better. Good, okay. Talk about that. A keyboard shortcut? What? Yeah, no kidding. You can do a control K and it will open up search right there. Well, let's see. Well, not so much for me. Interesting. I wonder why not. Yes. Oh, oh you, are you on a Macintosh by any chance? I no. am. So you, you did the, the, the I did funny character yeah. king? Yeah. Oh. Huh. I'm getting no, so no it's getting intercepted. I, I don't have any plugins, extensions in this browser. Exactly. Well, but but it should, as far as I know, it should still be handled. So that right. may have to report a bug there because it certainly works for me. When okay. I do a Control K, it puts me right into that search dialog. And I had it work on my two other machines. Mm -hmm. So I, who knows what it is? But I haven't tested this this particular Firefox with this instance of. So. Right. So it should work. But don't exactly. be surprised. You can still click because that didn't get taken away. You can still click in the search box. Exactly. Well, and and that search box still is an imperfect thing, right? There's there are a lot of things that that search box just isn't as good as we'd like it to be. Okay, this is a lot of words. Can you can you boil down these words to this? This 10? is 
make upstream projects and downstream projects behave more like you expect them to behave ah. when they're blocked. <laughs> that's, the, that's the short words description. Make okay. them behave more like you expect when one is blocking another. Okay. Breadcrumbs for managed Jenkins. Yeah, so... This got a little weird for me. Okay. After how, how many years? Right. Eight, 18, almost 18 years? Uh, it, it is. We're, we're approaching the 18th birthday. Yep. Manage Jenkins. All good. Mm -hmm. Configure system. Uh, what? I have a Manage Jenkins up here now? Because usually, going back over here to 346, if I click on Configure System, I get Configure System. So how do I get back to Manage Jenkins? I have to go down here. The flow just doesn't make sense. It's hard to break 18 years of habit going here and looking up here, but I, I will break that habit. Right, and, and that's, that's, guess what? Breadcrumbs are now more consistent because it was yes. a little odd compared to every other application in the world that breadcrumbs actually were the whole per path that you were traversing, not a part of the path, not an edited path. Right, okay. Breadcrumbs. I had to laugh when I saw this. I knew this, but I'd forgotten it. Uh -huh. Use native Java platform functionality rather than ant to load classes. Yeah, this is so ant was at the core of Jenkins. Absolutely, and this is this is like fifteen plus years of history being, yeah. and and it was not just ant; it was a fork of the ant class loader. So so the danger was. It was a fork that we owned. And right. it's much better to do class loading, particularly in this case, because the class loading now can be done in parallel, whereas the ant class loader, if I remember correctly, was single threaded. Yeah. So so there is some now now do do most users really care about stopwatch based benchmarks of class loading performance? Probably not. But getting off of a forked copy of a library onto standard platform functions is a good thing. One less thing to maintain. That's right. Okay. Uh, we talked about web store already. And by the way, if you need to go back for, if something goes sideways, there is a uh, hatch door there that you can throw in. There is. Yes. And, and if you ever have to invoke one of those escape hatches, please submit a bug report so that people know, Hey, I had to use an escape hatch and here's why. Connect breadcrumb context menus to items and subfolders. Right, so better navigation. Got it. WebSocket reconnection in edge cases. Right, and now this is this is a fun one because there okay. were some there's there are complications associated with WebSocket. Right, WebSockets are really good thing, allowing agents to connect by using the HTTP port or the HTTPS port rather than a dedicated port is really a good thing because you always have to open up that HTTP access. Users are gonna access it. So WebSocket is very powerful that way. It helps me use agents without needing a dedicated port for agents. However, that means communication is happening between agents and the controller and between users in the controller over the same protocol and the same port. And there are some bumps and bruises sometimes with that. Okay, and this one. Revert prior attempts to log records collectible by limited discarded message. What? Yeah, this oh. this one is just a. Hey, we had we had attempted a particular change to huh. reduce memory usage and ultimately decided nope, that thing is is not the right approach. Okay, so let's look at the backports because you said there were some, maybe some interesting. Number one is Jetty. Jetty got right. backported from. 2.363, I think, is the think, version yeah. that we put it in. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, updates. So there are more things. By the way, when the next LTS comes out in three months, mm -hmm. the UI is going to look even more interesting. That's correct. There are more UI changes. We've already seen some interesting changes in the plugin manager, and yep. and more are coming. So when, when we get to the January LTS, oh. it's going to be more. I want to... Okay, before we go through these, I want to go back to one more thing. Okay. Remember, I was talking, I was whining about how the breadcrumb has changed, and now I've got to rethink. Mm -hmm. That was actually the easy one. Here's the hard one for me. 
So here I'm on manage plugins on 346. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I had plugins, this is a fresh installation of 346. If I had plugins I needed to update, I would have to go all the way to the bottom and click on all, which would check all the boxes for me Then I would say go. Right. Right. Again, 15 years of habit. Mm -hmm. Now, manage Jenkins, manage plugins. Check this out. It's a little bit harder to see, uh, but there's a, a single checkbox here. That whole all select, uh, all that's gone. Just, right. just gone. And now you just actually interact with the checkboxes, but there is a checkbox at the top, sort of like how you'd normally do things. You'd have a checkbox at the top of columns. Mm -hmm. So that's right. there. That, and, and, and okay, my experience has been the inverse of yours. I've spent the last several weeks testing the release candidate of 361.1. And when I have to mm -hmm. go back to 346, I ask myself, where is the all checkbox at the top? So, so it's a trainable behavior, Darren. I promise you'll get you'll get through that. It, it is, and uh, it's. Uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> but yeah, okay. nice nice highlight because guess what? The plugin manager is not done evolving, Correct. and it's going to continue being refined and improved. The look the look in the field just keeps getting better. Okay, so UI fix an error when polling. Uh, just some internal things here, right? Or was this, okay, this was, I consider that an internal. It, it is, except that we had some awkward stuff where the reason this one's highlighted is 2.361, the weekly mm -hmm. release, failed to publish some particularly important documentation components. Ah. And we said that's not acceptable for an LTS. We don't mind it for a weekly, but for an LTS, we've got to have those components. And so we included it here. Okay. Uh, update to remoting. Right. This is not related to the remoting. We well, it's, it all it's, comes together. But it does. Remoting is remoting is remoting. In this case, it's it's a separate note here because there were some specific things that came came after the release of three sixty one that we absolutely wanted to include. Yeah, you know, like unable to create a new native thread. That's important. Right. Well, really and important. and that's that's actually part of the that's one of the subtexts of the thing that was mentioned below. Right. Uh, some icon things sorting by oh yeah fixed sorting list of install plugins by timestamp. Again, installed on old or previous, not old uh -huh. but previous. Right. Uh, there was nothing there. Right. But now installed. What am I not seeing, Mark? Uh, good question. Let's see. So fix sorting of install plugins by timestamp and plugin manager. Oh, 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 wait a sec. So, uh, go back. Let's read the text again, because now Sorry. I'm gonna have to stare at it for a little bit. I'm not sure I know. Installed plugins by timestamp. Yeah, so I don't know. That's a good question. I don't remember either. Okay. Yeah, we, we could th open the bug I'd report seen it. and look at it. Oh, you know notice, what? Hang on a second. Wait, notice wait. the regression date on it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Let me... No, it wasn't that. I thought it could have been my Zoom level could have hidden it, but that's mm. not it. No, yeah, I think if you notice the, the, the version that regressed it, mm -hmm. 274. So that's that's been an issue for about 18 months. Yeah. Uh Build number cut off in Safari. Does anybody okay. use Safari? Oh yes, yes. That really? Be, oh yes. There are lots of Mac OS users who love their Safari browser. Okay, I'm but not one of but those. this this one was sort of an embarrassment one, right? It was okay. your build number was one hundred twenty three, and it displayed as twelve. So so we like that this one got fixed. Twelve one twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You know. <laughs> Monotonically increasing numbers. That's all we care. <sighs> okay. Script console input's not resizable. Looks like it is. Those are always annoying, by the way. Um, right, right. We we expect that when the handles are available, that they should, should actually respond. Grab it. Exactly. Yep. And then one developer thing. So that's right. Okay. Whatever. Um, anything else we need to talk about on the release? It was actually other than the world blowing up. Uh, it was pretty simple. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. If you look at it, throw Java 11 out. Right. Right. Because that, that's a big one. And mm -hmm. all the flavors that, are, that just happen to happen around 
the JDK versions coming out right now, or the ones that were available with 11.16 and 17.03, or 4, whichever one it was, 17.04. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually not a huge release. A well, lot of UI changes, and but it, it wasn't like, to me, this is this is a much simpler release than to even the table to, tables to divs. And right, those and, I, and I agree with you. The, the what I would what I would say is, we might consider it a tick and talk kind of thing, where three forty six was tick, and yeah. tick changed the UI. Talk, yeah. this one now is changing, sort of back end, core components, and you should expect that tick is coming back the next time and will yeah. give us more UI changes. So, and that's okay too. We like both. Speaking of TikTok, mm-hmm. but not TikTok, not that TikTok, you're running out of time. It's almost time for DevOps World. Did mm-hmm. you know that? I, I it's do. It's only three we- three weeks from today. It's ending. At the time we're doing this live, literally, like what time is it now? Five o'clock Eastern. That's yes. when it's. That's when the conference is over. That's correct. I can't do the. I can't do 168 times three in my head. But that's how many hours until it's over with. So that means you have less than that to get to Orlando. So September 27th, 28th, and 29th. The tickets are $1,350 if you want to save $400. When you go to register, if you look down in the description of the video that you're watching right now, there is a coupon code for DW22 Jenkins RTE. That's DW22 Jenkins RTE. That'll save you $400 off. Lots of sessions. Mark and I have been doing some Tuesday streams. If you haven't caught those yet, we'll be doing another one next Tuesday. We'll be talking more about some of the sessions that you might see there. But Mark's session on contributing to open source, if you're even the least bit interested, that's a session that you want to see. Absolutely. We're going to have a lot of fun in that session. We're having a lot of fun preparing for it. We'll spend 90 minutes taking you from your first through your first contributions to a Jenkins plugin and the contribution you will make will be useful, valuable and small. You'll do it and we have prepared the answers in the back of the book so that if something goes wrong you can always look at our answers in the back of the book. We've adopted 25 plus plugins and we're preparing those pull requests for those 25 plus plugins. So come join us. We're going to talk about how you can contribute to open source. And of course, I can't walk away from this again. It's at the Orlando World Center Marriott. Part of the resort fee when you stay on site at the hotel, that's the host hotel, you get a free bucket of golf balls and access to drivers each day that you're there. At least that's what it, I saw on the paper. Yep. So come out and swing a golf club. Yeah. Just not at us, at the golf ball. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Don't, don't, don't. You know, don't throw your frustration at eleven zero sixteen. That's just not that's not the right thing to do. But you know, golf ball, Florida into September. Cross your fingers. Hopefully, it's going to be nice. Yes, the Crew Five mission has been moved off to the week after, so that's no no bueno anymore. Sadly, I was looking forward to that. Mm. Just to see a live launch would have been great. Yeah. Sorry, no no rocket launch this time. <sighs> okay. What else do we need to cover, Mark? Is that I'd- I think we covered it. I think we touched it. Oh, no, wait a sec. I've got one more. All right, so there is one, and it's actively being evaluated by the community now. So we have a report that agents that are using WebSockets had some specific issues related to a, a threading problem. So a pull request has been submitted to Weekly. And it, we're waiting for evaluation. It will be evaluated in weekly, et cetera. So we expect that we will see final of that in weekly this coming Tuesday. And then it will arrive in the dot two release in about four weeks. So if you're using agents that use WebSocket, you may want to either consider holding for this release, wait for that too, or at least evaluate it very carefully before you deploy. Okay. Heed the warnings of Mark. This is a wise idea. Because the last, okay, even if your controller gets upgraded right, but then your agents can't connect, it's still not going to be a fun weekend. 
Well, and, and in this case, it's not even a connection problem. Okay. The problem happens happens later. And so, oh. so if you're using WebSocket for your agents, it's probably a good thing to test thoroughly. Good. Uh, if you're using Jenkins and you're upgrading, it's probably a good idea to test thoroughly. If you're oh. using any software and upgrading, it's probably a good idea to test thoroughly. Yes, okay. absolutely. We'll, we'll let that stay right there. Um, any other basics that we can tell people that, you know, the, the obvious things that we should be saying? <laughs> no, no, those, that we those don't, are pretty good. I, I like, I, you know, I know you follow everything and you never skip any steps. I skip steps all the time, but you don't. Okay. We'll be back next Tuesday, which will be September. Mark, help me. I should always have this written down in front of me. What date is that? September the 13th. 13th, correct. Uh, at noon Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific, talking about something. Right. We we'll be talking yet. about DevOps world topics. DevOps world topics, but we don't have the hard topic yet. So if you have a question about that or something you'd like for us to talk about, over in the chat right now uh, or even afterwards, you can just drop something in there. Absolutely. Right. We're happy to, happy, to, happy to entertain topics, happy or, to have lots of fun. Or could they go over and post in community, community.jenkins.io? Absolutely. Community.jenkins.io is a, is a great forum location. If you've got questions, ask your questions there. If you've got things you'd like to highlight, there's a showing off section to community.jenkins.io. By all means, show off. It's a cool thing to see. Okay. So thanks to everybody that was here with us live today. If you watched the replay, thanks for watching until the end. Again, if you're coming to DevOps World and you want to save $400, Use that code DW Jenkins or hmm, DW22 Jenkins RTE. Again, it's down in the description of this video. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us, and we will talk to you again on Tuesday.